What's going on everyone? Welcome to the first video in this series on getting started with triathlon. Getting started with triathlon can be pretty intimidating. There's a lot of different things that you can get or that you need. So you have swimming, biking, and running, and there's gear for each discipline on all those. Deciding on what you need to get, it can, it can be costly. So you wanna make sure you know what you need to get and what you don't need, because it, it can be very easy to go down a rabbit hole and start spending a, a lot of money on, on this sport. So what I wanna do is go through some, some of the things that are gonna be necessary that you'll need, and some other things that are gonna be, they could be good to have, but they're not, they're not definitely like needed. Because like I said, the sport can get expensive, but it also doesn't have to get expensive because you can, you can kind of control those costs and, and get away with not, not too much. And in this series kind of going over getting started with like a, like a sprint triathlon or maybe an Olympic distance. So a little shorter distance. I'm not talking about half Ironman or Ironman because those distances will require a little bit more um, gear maybe. So let's just go over some things. I'm not really kind of going in any order. I'm just gonna just show you a few different things. So first, you know, we've got swim cap you wanna get for swimming and goggles. So the swim cap, what you do is you, you can just use this when, you, when you're training and swimming in the pool or swimming in the ocean or a lake or wherever you're doing open water swims or a, um, or a pool swim. Uh, they will actually give you a swim cap when you go to the triathlon, so you won't actually use your own swim cap when you, when you go. Uh, so just be, be aware of that. So you won't even actually need one for a race day. I would always bring it just in case, uh, but, but you want to have this for training just so you can you get, you get used to it. Uh, another thing, this, the, the goggles. You definitely want to have the goggles, and there's different types of goggles that you can get. Uh, like these ones right here, these are clear, but you can also get mirrored, which can um, think of like polarized sunglasses. They will prevent the sun. But for your first try, don't put too much weight on the goggles. Just get a just get a just a decent pair. You can get a pair for 15 bucks on Amazon. Uh, and another thing about this video, I will put links in the description for all of the the gear that I show, so you can easily find it uh, and order order the gear if you need to do that. Uh, so yeah, swim goggles, very basic, not, not much to them, about 15 bucks on, on Amazon. Uh, sunglasses, kind of a given, it's kind of, if you want them, you can have them, but you know, you don't need, you don't need special sunglasses. You don't need to be like a pro and order $200 sunglasses. I use $5, uh, $5 sunglasses from Dollar General. And they work just fine because sometimes they break while I'm running. Sometimes I just need to throw them off because they get really dirty on the bike or something. So just, you know, whatever suits you. If you want them, use them, but they're, they're not needed. Uh, a hat would be nice. Uh, just to kind of keep the sun out of your eyes. It's kind of a personal preference to you if you want to use the hat or not. It's, uh, I, I do sometimes and sometimes I don't. It depends on like, how early the race is or how late the race is gonna get. Cause if it's a sprint, a sprint you can sometimes get done in an hour and a half, you know? So you start at 7 a.m. and you're done by 8.30. So the sun's just, you know, not been up that much. So you might not even need a hat, but for training, you probably want a hat anyways. Uh, let's go to some bike stuff. So, um, so for the bike, you know, obviously you need a bike. You can, <laughs> you can spend a lot of money on a bike if you want. But for your first triathlon, you don't really need to spend that much money on a bike. Just, if you have any bike laying around, just use it. Uh, when I first started triathlon, I used a beach cruiser. Um, it was just a, just a beach cruiser my parents had, and it had a few gears on it or something, but, but that's what I used. But I was extremely nervous. I thought I had to have like this really fancy bike to do triathlon and all of this, and, and I didn't. I was a little nervous when I, when I started, but don't worry about it. Just use whatever bike you want. You know, you don't want to spend money on the sport until you actually know you want to get into it. So just whatever bike works, just, just use it. Don't, don't get a, don't get caught up in the hype or get nervous about what type of bike you have. Um, so that aside, you know, if you want to get a bike, you know, make sure you get like proper bike. You're going to want to make sure you get fitted for the bike, go to a proper bike shop, and all that because you can you can get a bike for you know a thousand bucks or five thousand dollars or even ten thousand dollars or even more um 
but you know it's, it's kind of up to you do some research on on bikes to get but don't worry about it too much if you have a bike just sitting around use it you know if it's your first triathlon next thing for the bike um so for the bike you can most bikes have depending on what bike you have you'll, you'll have there's uh, shorts that you can wear on the bike that have padding in the back which, which prevents yourself from, uh, you know, you butt hurting essentially. So you can wear these on the bike, but this is also, this is also like a, a tri suit. So you, so you basically get a tri suit and this is a two piece tri suit. So you have the, the shorts and the top and you can actually wear both of these while you do the swim. So you don't have to worry about changing clothes. So you just have these, you know, in the swim bike and the run, you wear, you just wear these. And there's also a tri suit that's a single, if you want, where it's just one, it's a one piece um, contraption that you can wear. But yeah, but yeah, you can just use these, these padded thing, uh, shorts and the shirt for, for your swim, bike and run. So, you know, it's, it's just perfectly fine to wear it in your, um, while you're swimming, biking or running. Uh, you know, I would, I would train with this at least a couple of times. Uh, like in your pool or, or something like that, just to make sure you, you know, just so it's comfortable, it's not the first thing you do on, on race day, but it's, you know, pretty trivial. It's, it's nice to have, um, and they're not, they're not too terribly expensive. Um, you might, you might spend 50 bucks or between 50 and hundred bucks for, for the combo, um, depending on what, what you get. Um, but you'll, you'll definitely want to have this, but you don't have to have it. It's, it's kind of your preference. My first triathlon I did in running shorts. I did the entire thing in running shorts. So I just, I wore just regular old running shorts for the swim, for the bike and the run. You know, the, the, the bike I had, I had a beach cruiser, so I had a nice soft seat. So it didn't really matter too much on, on having these shorts that have the padding in it. Um, but if you have a bike that, you know, the seat's not that comfortable and you need that padding, you, you'll want to get you some, some of these um, because it'll, it'll, you know, prevent the, you know, your butt from hurting. So you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, yeah, but don't feel, you don't have to get this. Feel free to just use your running shorts. You know, I did that, I think my first couple of triathlons, you know, I didn't have a clue on what I was doing. I didn't know what, what to get. You know, I kind of learned as I went to a couple of triathlons, I learned what other people were doing. Um, so, but don't, don't worry about it, you know, and people aren't gonna like look at you any different. Um, everybody there is actually pretty helpful. So don't worry, don't worry about that at all. You're, you're gonna, you'll learn as you go, and if you enjoy the sport, you know, start getting that, you know, the fancier gear. You know, for the bike, you're gonna want a water bottle. You know, maybe get for if you're doing a sprint, just get one or two. That, that that's more than okay. Um, you don't need too terribly much. Just you know, you'll. Uh, I'll discuss what to fill these with in a in a different video for for when you go to a, a video about transitioning. Um, and everything and setting up your transition area but you know just get one or two of these you can get them on Amazon they're cheap and you'll, you'll fill them with water and or Gatorade you can also want a pump uh, you know make sure you have the right pump as well um, you know you don't want to get up on race day and need a, and need a and have a flat tire or something so make sure you have a pump, pump and make sure you have the right pump for your bike. Um, I made a mistake one time and costly mistake is I had, I got a new bike and I never pumped it up after like a week of riding it. And then I had to travel on the next day and I ordered that ordered a pump offline or something, or I had an existing pump, but I didn't realize my existing pump didn't go with the new bike. I bought that the, the air holes or whatever you call it are, were different. So I didn't have a pump. Um, so, and I ended up not going to the race cause I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. I didn't know like how to pump up the bike. Like, so it was pretty embarrassing and I didn't even go, but I found out, you know, I needed a different pump for, for that tire. So just make sure you have the right pump for your, your bike. Um, a helmet, the helmet's always required. You, you have to have that. If you don't have a helmet, they won't let you race. And, and with helmets, you can get very expensive ones or very cheap ones. You know, for yours, just get the very basic one. Go to Walmart, go get it on Amazon or whatever. Just get a, get a very basic uh, 
a helmet and don't put too much thought into it. There are like aerodynamic helmets that you can get, but for now, don't worry about it. Uh, of course, you're gonna need running shoes. Um, you know, well, you could you could wear any shoes, but I prefer you, you probably want to do uh, running shoes. You know, get whatever you know fits you nice. You can go to a running shop and have them get them specifically. You know, but what they will do is actually they will watch you walk, and they'll see how your legs um, move, and they can suggest the right type of shoe for you which is a good thing you want to get. So I, I would suggest that go to a running shop locally and then, you know, have them figure out what, what type of, how your feet, you know, angle when you walk so you get the right pair of shoes and that can help you uh, prevent injuries and all of that. And once you find the right shoe, you can always, you know, later on just go on Amazon for your next pair and get them if you want to. Uh, but it's always good to shop local anyways, but yeah. So get, get a good pair of running shoes. You definitely want to get these. Um, and if you notice here, I have th these laces, they don't tie. These are called lock laces. These are not required, um, but it it's up to you. So I'll talk about this more in a different video, but when you go into transition, so when you come off the, you know, the bike and you need to slip your shoes on, you, uh, you don't have to worry about putting a, uh, we can put a sock on if you want, but you don't have to worry about tying your shoes. These are just kind of like, they stretch a little bit. So you can just, uh, put your feet right in. Um, and it, it can save you, you know, 10, 10, 20 seconds during transition, which, you know, it's up to you if you want to save that time or not. But, you know, I like the lock laces. They're like 10 bucks on Amazon. So, you know, it, it, it's up to you. But I'll go over in, in another video about transition and all of that. So don't worry about that right now. Just look at one of the, the other videos. All right. And depending on like what type of bike you have, you can get a, a clipless shoe for the bike. Um, so there's, you know, there's cleats and these, what, what they call it, it's called clipless, but it's actually you clip into the bike. Um, you know, if, if you want to get these, it's up to you. It's one more thing you got to buy and learn. Um, you also have to get the special pedals for your bike, but if you don't already have them, just, just don't get them yet, but you can get them in the future. Uh, it's, it's a good thing to have if you're going to continue to bike a lot. Um, but don't worry about it too much. Um, yeah, if you want, just what I did for a while, my first triathlons, I just used my running shoes on my bike. Um, so, and I was always, it was, you know, I was always the fastest out of going from the swim to the bike. I was always the fastest because I just had to slip my shoes on real quick and go. And then going from tier, tier two, which is going from the bike to the run, I was actually really fast in that transition because I didn't have to change out of these and go into my running shoes. But, you know, you might gain a little bit more speed on the bike with these, but don't put too much weight into it now. Yeah, when, you, when you're training just for like, for the swim, and you're, if you're gonna swim in the pool or the um, ocean, you know, going back to this tri-suit, you know, I, I, for the most part, I, use the, I just use the, the, um, the shorts when I went to the pool or the ocean and just swam in these. Uh, but you can also just get a, a very basic swimsuit if you want, um, swim in those. It's kind of up to you. I swim in running shorts quite often too as well. Um, the running shorts create a little bit of drag, and the, but these are like tight on your, on your thighs. So it, it's up to you. Um, and then for training at least, you know, a nice specific pair of running shorts is good. It's up to you. You can just wear gym shorts. It's, it's kind of, you know, up to you, your personal preference, but you know, you can get yourself a nice pair of running shorts, but it's, it's not required. Another thing that's not required, but it's very helpful, but it's a little bit pricey is a, a watch. Um, and you can just get a regular watch, like a, like a fitness watch or a running watch or you can get like a multi-sport triathlon watch, which is what this is. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very nice. It's good for training. Cause then you can, it'll track your mileage, how long, how much you've ran and biking. It'll track that. And in open water swims, it'll track how far you've swam as well. And 
for the lap pool, it'll actually also track how many laps you've done in the pool um, because you can lose track while you're swimming sometimes. Um, but it's up to you. It's, it's definitely a higher end item. It's going to cost you a little bit more. I think this was 300 bucks or something when I first got it, but you can just get the running watches for a hundred, but there's probably some that will, that are a little bit cheaper, um, between a hundred and four, four to 500. Um, but I'll, I'll put some links in the description for that. So you can kind of, you know, pick and choose if, if you want to use it or not. Um, this here is a running belt. Um, you're going to want to get one of these and one thing it's good for is like maybe training. It's got a zipper, you know, so you can, you, for, for training, you can, you know, put your keys in there or anything like that. But, but for when you do the race, when you do the race, they're going to give you a bib. So it'll have a number, your number on it. So you're going to have a bib and what you're going to want to do is you're going to put that bib attach it to here. So then what they, what they require at the races is when you, you know, go from the bike to the run, you have to have your bib on. And it's not like you can attach your bib to your, your shirt that you're wearing because you'd be swimming and biking and it just, just wouldn't be really feasible. So you don't want to have to put your bib on and transition and like use safety pins and get it and spend like two minutes trying to get that in. So what you do is before the race, you take the safety pins, you attach your bib to this. And then once you get off the bike, you can just take this and, and wrap it around your waist and, and go. And then you get your number on front and, and you're good to go. And you don't, you save a lot of time during transition. So I would get, get one of these. Um, there's a lot of different styles and brands out there, but they're, they're fairly inexpensive and that's a, it's a good thing to get. Uh, probably the last thing is you're gonna wanna get some kind of bag. Uh, it's going to kind of depend on what you want. This is, this bag's a little bit bigger. This is just a, a speedo bag and I, I hold it for, I hold bike gear in it and I hold it for the swim or for my swim gear and stuff when I go to the pool and it's got, you know, it's, it's just, it's pretty big. It's got a lot of compartments and all of that. You don't have to get something this big, but you're going to want to get some type of bag like that, um, that you can put all your stuff in for race day. So when you go to the race, you're gonna, when you go to the transition, you know, you can have all your stuff in your bag. And then, you know, once you get to transition before the race starts, you can unload your bag at your transition area from that. So you definitely wanna get a, get a bag, uh, but I'll, I'll put a couple links to, to some bags as well, some different sizes. And that, like that, that, side, that bag I've got there is a little bit bigger than some of them. Um, but so you, so a small one's probably better. I just, I just have that and I just been using it and it, and it works fine. But, um, but yeah, bags, a uh, very good thing, um, to have. And yeah, so I think that's, that's some of the main gear that you have. I'm, I'm probably missing a couple things, but I think that's like the, some of the stuff I talked about is the, is the essentials that you need. Um, but of course, like I, as I explained on some, you don't have to get all of it. But that is kind of like, you know, some of the gear you're gonna need for race day, essentially. You know, training, you're gonna, you know, kind of require the same exact gear. Um, but yeah, so in the next, in the future videos, I will go over, you know, what this gear does, how to use this gear during transitions. Cause with triathlon, you have, you know, going from the swim to the bike and then bike to the run in the, in the middle of those couple transitions. So you're gonna have to, you know, you'll use this gear during those transitions and I'll, I'll show you kind of like what to do and how to do that, how to set it up, you know, and what to expect on, on race day and all that. So don't forget to subscribe to uh, the channel below so you don't miss out on the future videos and I will see you in the next videos.